Hi, I'm Brent with Five Rivers Metro Parks and want to welcome you to our Tuesday at noon Facebook Live. We're going to talk about paddling in colder weather. I want to remind you that our Facebook Live series is brought to you by Subaru of America. So we're going to talk to Amy and she's going to be talking to us about paddling in colder weather. I want to remind you that you can uh, ask questions and we'll get those questions relayed to you. Angela is off camera and she'll be talking to, uh, to Amy if any questions come through. So. Uh, go ahead and start asking questions and we'll get on to Amy. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We're here to talk about how to prepare and what to think about when we're paddling in cold weather. And uh, so we're going to do a quick overview of some of the things that we always want to think about when we're paddling any time of year, of course. And then we'll go into some of the more specifics about cold weather paddling in general. So <clears throat> I have a plethora of items on the table here for you to learn about and we're going to talk about the spectrum of cost as well so you don't have to have everything that's on here but certainly we want to display absolutely everything that you want to think about when you're preparing for cold weather because we can paddle year round as long as we think about things in a safe manner and uh, holistically so let's get into it. First thing that we want to remember to do is, is uh, always make a float plan and tell someone who cares where you're going and when you'll be back so that if you don't return at that time or at a similar time that you say, they know to go and uh, check on you. The other thing we want to think about is the basics that you want to carry with you when you're paddling. So the first thing I really want to point out is the life jacket. And uh, we always want to wear it, right? It's important and it's especially important in cold water. The reason it's important in cold water is it not only keeps you afloat, but it also provides insulation for you. When we prepare for uh, paddling in cold weather, you always want to prepare for the very worst scenario. And that's really the case for any kind of paddling. You want to think about immersion. And uh, when we're immersed in water that's very cold or have it compiled with cold weather on top of that, our extremities start to lose their ability to function, our fine motor skills, very, very quickly. When you're immersed in water, we cool four to five times faster than we do when we're um, not wet or immersed in water. And so staying afloat and staying insulated and really minimizing the amount of contact that you have with the water to your skin is the most important thing to think about. So. Let's back up a little bit and talk about some of the basics. We always want to have a first aid kit with us, and this is ours here at Five Rivers Metro Parks, and it's extra large because we always are caring for others that are with us in our group. You can, you can have a more personalized size if you want. And now, Jean, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can save an old peanut butter jar, anything that'll keep the water out, but uh, allow you to get in and get at the elements. We, we prefer wide mouths if you use some kind of bottle. But a dry bag is, is really your best bet. Uh, it's kind of a little more smashable and you can get it inside of that boat more easily. And then we have some specifics for depending what kind of water. I'm gonna talk about all bodies of water. Here in Dayton, Ohio, at Five Rivers Metro Parks, we have a lot of rivers, we have a few lakes, but we are in Ohio and people do travel for other bodies of water. We have our Great Lakes and that's an open water scenario. And sometimes people travel to other water. So I'll be covering the spectrum of what to think about on all bodies of water. But uh, diving in here locally, we have what we call a pen kit. You want, again, thinking about the worst case scenario. And so this has some pulleys and some webbing in there in case you get your boat stuck on, on a rock or, or against something that you don't want to be stuck with. You also want to be thinking about a throw bag and this is nice and bright and you want this really handy has a nice loop here so you can attach it easily and in, in your boat and then uh, inside of our boat we also want to have float bags this helps disperse water if you were to capsize so it doesn't fill with water and that's important so that it not only stays afloat but it's less water that you have to empty out of your boat so these go inside behind the foot pegs and also behind your seat Going along with that theme, this is a bilge pump. So if it does fill, you can actually empty the best you can back to front out of the cockpit. And then once you're in there, you can get the less out with either a sponge or a bilge pump. 
If you do capsize, you want to think about how to get back into the boat. So you want to hang on to your gear. But um, we have things like this, which are a strap and it has a float, it's just webbing. But that's something that you can learn in a rescue class to learn how to get back inside of your boat. It's nice and handy to have with you. So we want to think about our pin kits. We also want to think about light because this time of year, the weather, the timing of light in the day changes and you don't want to get caught outside when you don't have light. So you want to think about, this is a strobe light, so that helps signal for help. But equally, a nice headlamp, that's helpful because when you're on water at, in, at night, you need to be able to be seen kind of from a 360 point of view. So it's nice to have one on the front of the boat, on the bow and the stern, but also a headlamp uh, meets the law requirement for the state of Ohio. And then you always want to check the weather before you go. And if you can, take a, a weather radio with you so that you can check that along with extra batteries because in cold weather we know that batteries can fail on us so it's important to have extra batteries with you and i don't actually have a vhf radio with me but this is a nice dry bag that's made for one and it is nice to have a vhf radio especially if you're on open water like in lake erie or somewhere else in the country so those are some of the basics as far as gear if you're on a stand-up paddle board and not kayaking you do want to make sure you have your leash with you and that it's attached to the board and also to yourself because if you capsize you do want the safety of getting back to your board and then of course when we're paddling we want our extra paddle with us as well and this is a break breakdown paddle it comes apart you can also buy these in four pieces but it's always important to have an extra paddle so you're not stuck with that gear it's, it's easy when you capsize you want to always try and hang on to that paddle but Sometimes you don't, and so if you do lose it, you need to have that extra paddle. Along with the theme of safety, we need to have our signaling devices, and so you always want something that's audible, so a whistle, a Fox 40, it's really the loudest whistle on the market, and I don't usually try to tell you about different brands, but this truly is the best whistle out on the market for noise across bodies of water and other ambient noise that might be around. Our voices just don't carry as well when we're on open water with, with weather noises. So that's important. I'm gonna open up to questions here in just a minute. I just wanna finish up a couple of signaling devices. This is also a mirror. And so this is small, this can go in your first aid kit, but that can be helpful not only on water, but also off water if you need to signal for help. So all things to, to just think about anytime we're on the water, especially doing long trips, or uh, going out. And the last thing I'll say in this, this camp of, of safety ahead of time before we dive into some more specifics of what to wear and what to think about, uh, along with your float plan, is to remember that though it's nice to paddle alone sometimes out on a lake that's pristine, it's really important, especially in cold weather, to paddle in groups of three. If something did happen, that allows someone to stay with someone that might be injured or needs help, and it allows someone else to go for help. So paddling in groups of three or more is always important to remember. So I'm going to pause for a second and see if there are any questions out there about any of this, because there's a lot of things to think about and uh, see if I can answer anything before we dive into personal care and, and uh, the clothing and what, why we need to carry extra things with us when we're paddling in cold weather. Yeah, there's one question. Greg wants to know, does the color of light matter in terms of like maritime laws or regulations? Does the color of, of the light like of the light? Uh, thank you, Greg. That's actually a good clarifier. Um, it is important, you know, when we're up with big, big boats, they use red and green. But honestly, with a kayaker or a stand up paddleboard, a white light is really all you need. And uh, that'll suffice, they, you know, the headlamp allows you to swivel so you can be seen to oncoming traffic. Um, but ideally, if you had a light on the front of the boat and the back of the boat, people from behind could also see you. So that is important. It's also why if you kind of scan the table, you'll see a lot of bright colors out here. We always want to try to dress in bright colors. And um, that's especially helpful if we're, we're out on um, <clears throat> large bodies of water anywhere where there might be waves or, or things to help us just be more visible 
to other style of boats that are ahead of us or out there on the water, sharing the water with us. So is that our only question so far? Yep, right now, that's it. <clears throat> All right, fantastic. So. I want to dive into why it's important to have all of this extra gear and be with people. And the main reason in cold weather paddling that we take extra gear and extra caution with clothing and what we're wearing is because of hypothermia. And so when your body core drops below a certain temperature, we go into a hypothermic state and we want to avoid that. And as I mentioned in the start of this, when you're immersed in water, we want to dress and think about the worst case scenario we cool four to five times faster through convection while we're in the water. And so trying to avoid any exposed skin as much as possible will allow us to maintain our fine motor skills. When you're in cold water, it's really hard to get out your phone or, or your signaling devices and actually be able to have dexterity. And so it is important to minimize that as much as possible. The other thing we wanna think about in cold water when we get immersed is something we don't have control of over. It's a, called the gasp reflex. And if you fall into cold water, especially your entire body, we have something called the gasp reflex. And it's just that. When you hit cold water, your lungs kind of contract and you reach for cold air or for air, period, right? And so the, having a life jacket on helps minimize actually your head going underwater and it brings you back on top so you don't take on water and it go <clears throat> into your lungs. And so that, that's important to always wear that. So if you're on rivers and you have the ability to um, have been trained on a spray skirt, you can wear a spray skirt over your cockpit. These are for recreation kayaks and also whitewater kayaks. And that just helps minimize the water coming into your lap as you paddle, whether it's the drip from your paddle on a lake or going through waves on the water. So if you're wearing a spray skirt, it is the rule of thumb to wear a helmet. And that reason is because typically you're in a boat that's going to turn all the way over and uh, we want to minimize actually having an injury to our head. This also insulates our head a little bit. And uh, so it's important whether you're on a lake or a river, you never know what's under the surface of the water. So it is important to be thinking about head protection at all times. So moving down, thinking with hypothermia in mind, we wanna get into clothing. And then I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks for before and after the paddle of things to think about that make life a little easier, whether it's changing clothes or, or just staying warm. I mentioned that before we, we leave for the water, you wanna file a float plan. You also want to make sure you're well hydrated and that you've had food in your system because that helps maintain our energy. The other thing is, is you want to use the restroom before you get on the water because when we have to go to the bathroom, our body uses a lot of energy to keep ourselves warm. And so by getting that out of our system, you know, it, that helps us maintain our heat. So filing that float plan and then I'm going to dive into the the first area to really think about, which is our, our hands, our feet, and our head. And so trying to think through what to wear. You can wear gloves. I find that um, that is hard to handle opening my water bottle sometimes or getting in to um, grab my camera for pictures or whatever. So I like to use something called a pogie. And these are neoprene. You can also get them in, in different types of material. But this just kind of um, Velcros, it's very strong Velcro as you can see. It Velcros around the paddle shaft and I will demonstrate this after I open it. <laughs> Holy tamale. So that just goes around the paddle shaft and I'll, I'll demonstrate that here for you. Come on buddy. Like that, one on each hand. And then you just simply, it is, my paddle is upside down. I did not look at that. So you wanna make sure it's on right. But you just slip your hand inside the shaft like that. And this neoprene keeps you insulated with the thin layer of water. These do get wet, but you can easily get out and have your hands free whenever you need that. Um, but it is important 
to make sure you look at your paddle, make sure it is upright in the right position and then put it on. All right. So these come in a variety of styles. This is a big one that comes up higher on your arm. I like the little mittens because they're easier to slip in and out and they still cover my whole hand. Um, the other thing to think about is our feet. And so we want to think about wearing synthetic layers or wool or natural fiber layers, silk or wool, or those natural fibers, which help wick the moisture away from your skin and help keep you warm. And so there's a variety of different products out there. You can go with just regular wool socks. You can wear neoprene socks. And then you want to think about booties, which have some protection on the sole, but don't have laces. It's important when we're paddling to really think about not having laces so your shoes don't come untied or get tangled if you are immersed in the water in something. So some kind of booty. And then the other one is head protection. So there's a variety of different types of caps. You can wear a hat. This is a, a really thin um, one that I use for skiing a lot, but it's just a silk weight. You can get a mid-weight kind of one. You can wear a fleece hat. Or you can buy paddling specific, and you can tell this has had a lot of use in its life. But uh, this is neoprene, and it has ear cuffs, so it comes over your entire head and um, covers you. It's thin enough to sit inside your helmet, but it still keeps you nice and warm. And this kind of has an extra layer of protection with this, um, this covering on it that keeps the wind away. So neoprene helps with the wind protection a little more. So important to take care of our heads, head, hands, and feet, thinking that through all the way. Now, we also want to think through what we want to take with us on the water, which is extra clothing and a dry bag, such as this, water and food. And I recommend that you put your water and food in a separate dry bag and your extra clothing in a different bag, but take that extra clothing on the water with you because if you or someone in your party does capsize on the water uh, you may need to get them warm and, and the, might be the fastest way to get them warm is by getting them in dry clothes so that's important to think about now let's talk about layering and layering all the way through we want to think about what I call the three W's you want to have a wicking layer you want to have a warm layer and you want to have what we call a weather layer which is some kind of shell that blocks you from the wind so I'm going to talk about that all the way through but it's important to think about that all the way from your undergarments to your outer layering. So you can wear a bathing suit, you can wear sports bras, they make polypropylene underwear out there. So what, whatever it is that you choose, it is important to not wear cotton. We uh, have a saying in the paddling community, in the outdoor community really, that cotton is rotten. And, and what we mean by that is that cotton doesn't wick the water and your sweat layers away and insulate you. It actually helps keep you colder. And so it's important to wear those, those uh, synthetic fibers or natural fibers, silk and wool specifically when you're on the water. The, the other thing that you want to think about with that is the layering technique. And so ideally when you're thinking about the, the clothing that's closest to your skin, you actually want that to be a really thin layer of clothing. And so whether that's your bathing suit or your underwear or whatever it is, your next layer would be what I would call a silk weight layer. And you can come in close if you want, but this is very, very, very thin and soft and it's um, warmer. You don't want to start with your thickest layer. And that's because you want your body to be able to regulate. You also want this thinnest layer to help wick that sweat away and help it be breathable. And so you want to build upon that. So you can have something like what we call reference a silk weight layer. And then there's the next layer, which is mid weight layer. And that can be capilene or polypropylene. And then you have what we call our expedition weight layer, which is a little more fleecy. It's much thicker. Um, and by wearing those, and I'm not saying you have to wear all three layers, you have to decide for yourself what's work, working, but you can always take clothing off. You, if you don't have it with you to put on, you want to start off as warm as possible, especially when we're dealing with cold water. And when, when you're out in the weather, you, it's not always something where you're saying, oh, I'm a little chilly. I think I'll get out and grab more 
more clothing. Sometimes we choose not to do that because frankly, it is, um, it's just not easy to do. You have to take things off. You have to take that weather layer off to do it. So I always say start on the side of caution with more clothing and, and take it off as needed. Um, but there is some personal preference there, so you can choose. But so that's your under, under layer there, and they make all different types of clothing. You can, you can go from different cost elements to the actual brands that carry paddling gear out there to um, really just a Target or a Walmart and buy their, in their hunting section or in their outdoor sections. Now they have a lot of this material. Sport clothing, athletic wear, you can really find this type of clothing all over the place so it shouldn't be too hard to find that and then of course they also make whole body uh, suits as well so there's lots of different styles out there this can be harder for women specifically to have a whole body suit because if you do have to get out and use the restroom um, even though they zip up it's and give you a little flap it is not always the easiest um, to deal with right and we don't always want to get undressed so I personally recommend having a bottom layer and a top layer, but depending what you're doing, you may choose that. Um, this is my layer for wearing. I wear a dry suit, and we'll talk about dry suits in a minute. First, I wanna talk about wet suits. And so that was the bottom layer, this is the top layer. You can find the same layering system on your top half, um, thin layer, a thicker layer, and a, the thickest. Some people do choose to wear fleece, and, and this is a fleece jacket i will tell you when paddling that is not really my personal preference because when fleece gets wet it gets very bulky and it really collects a lot of water which can be uncomfortable um, so i like to stick to polypropylene or capylene type of layers instead but then we move into the wetsuit material which is neoprene and it comes in a lot of different thicknesses it can start with a 0.5 and go all the way up to seven or eight millimeters in thickness of it. And the way that a wetsuit works is that it, um, and you can buy short sleeves or long sleeves, different layers in what we call farmer johns. These also come in full length arms. Um, but the point of a wetsuit is that it warms a very thin layer of water between your skin and the um, suit itself and that thin layer of water is what helps insulate you so it's important when you wear a wetsuit to actually wear this against your skin you don't want, really want layers of clothing underneath that it won't work in the in the best possible way so so that's something to think about the other material is a dry suit and i have an example of a dry top i don't have a full suit these are not insulating layers. These are your weather layer. Um, but the difference between a dry suit and a different type of top is specifically this gasket right here, which seals against your wrists. And they usually have full booties against your feet. And um, this gasket seals the water and anything from being able to get inside of the suit. It's breathable inside out so it allows your perspiration to get out but it doesn't allow water to penetrate and so these are really nice but these are on the higher end of the spectrum for money and so they come in full length suits or you can just do a dry top again keeping in mind that as we are thinking about the worst case scenario when we paddle you always want to be paddling in your limits but you never know when you may capsize and so a dry suit or a dry top only without the full suit will not keep you from getting wet. You can see that this does have a nice tight layer that would go around my waist and my spray skirt, if I were wearing that, could tuck in between this layer and help me um, stay as dry as possible. But as soon as I'm outside of my boat and immersed in the water, I'm, that's gonna wick right up inside and everything under there is gonna get wet. So let's go through the spectrum of, of, of paddling uh, weather layers. There's, there's a plethora of them from and you'll notice this layer is pretty bright on the outside and that's important for visibility but um, you can use a rain jacket if you want if that's all you have the nice thing about some of these paddling specific jackets is that they have a cuff right here that can go around your wrist to help minimize the water layer of going inside and it also has a draw cord on the bottom 
that it can help you cinch that nice and tight against your body, trying to keep any splash or water from coming up inside. And so there's a variety of different styles and colors. This is what we call a semi-dry top, so it has just a neoprene neck gasket, but it does have the, uh, the rubber gasket on the wrists, okay? And then for uh, paddling on open water, they make specific jackets that are really nice for sea kayaking with reflective strips on them and a hood. So there is a variety of different things out on the market there for you to wear. But the, the main thing to remember on all of this is that this is your main weather layer. And so even if it's nice and sunny outside or, you know, you feel like you're just remaining on flat water, you still can be open to the wind and the wind can make you cold and if you get wet from the splash or the drip of your paddle even if you don't capsize you will get more cold faster and so it's important to have this weather layer and and um, you know there's a variety of them out there so just keeping in mind that wicking layer that warm layer and then that weather layer will help kind of keep you safe out there now any questions about clothing before I talk about tips and tricks or anything to think about with staying a little warmer and thinking things through all the way from before to, to after paddling? No? no no questions have come in right now. I have a question for you, though. Sure. Uh, you mentioned in your layering silk weight, um, and I know that uh, they do make, like, silk long underwear, but when you say silk weight, are you referring specifically to specifically silk? Or... Good, good question. So the question about silk weight, am I referring specifically to silk? I'm not. You can wear silk. These are called silk weight because they're so soft and so thin. It is actually polypropylene material, um, which is a lot of times made from recycled uh, plastic, which is nice. Um, but uh, it's, it's just what it's referenced as, okay. a silk weight or a light weight, a mid weight, and then an, what we call an expedition weight or heavy weight. So thank you for that clarification. All right, so a couple of tricks. I mentioned you wanna eat and use the restroom before you get on the water. The other things you wanna think about is um, standing on the cold ground, right? And so you don't wanna undress or get out of your warm coat or anything until you get all your gear ready. So you wanna unload your craft, whether it's a board or a kayak or a canoe, whatever it might be. You wanna unload that get all the gear situated and ready and down by the water's edge before you decide to go back to your car and take off your warm jacket and, uh, and get your final paddling layers on. Also getting dressed at home before you go to the place, even if there's a change spot there is ideal. You're going to warm that up while you're driving to the site and think that through. But if you're unable to do that or you're going a really long distance, some other tips and tricks are to take just a thin insulate pad. It can be a, a canoe seat that you already have that you're taking with you. It could be a crazy creek chair, whatever it might be. You could cut from a thin slate pad. These are very inexpensive. And uh, you just want to lay that on the ground and stand on it. And uh, you can do this before and after, and that'll just help protect you from the elements of the ground and getting cold, especially when you're taking off your footwear and, and changing. Um, another option for before and after to think about is a fleece, and someone made this for me, so you, you can make them yourselves, but this just goes over and you're kind of hands-free. It's just a, a poncho, if you will, and uh, it's open underneath and so even if you're in that changing station, which we always recommend you change inside of somewhere, not just outdoors by your car, that'll help just keep your heat in and, and keep you a little warmer and more comfortable during the changing process. If you're paddling in salt water, you might consider taking a, a gallon of water and warming that up before you leave the house and just placing that inside your, your um, car. Even if you're out paddling for a few hours, it'll stay pretty warm. And uh, when you get back and you want to do that rinse from all, the, all that salt water, it'll be a nice warm layer that'll allow you to warm up as you um, change or right before you change or um, into your dry clothes. I mentioned always having dry clothes with you. That is important. And also extra food. 
um, not only with you, but also in the car when you get back so that you can uh, warm up your energy and or warm up yourself and keep your energy up as you change and, and uh, do what you need to do to get ready to go home. Before you undress, you should consider loading your gear back on the car at the end of the day. So that's after the paddle. But um, thinking through those options and, and uh, not worrying about, you know, sometimes when you load your boat, you think you have all the water out of it and you go to place it upside down on your car and splash, a little bit of cold water comes over you. So it's nice to still be in your gear before you decide to change. Um, so those are kind of some basic tricks. What happens if you feel like you're getting shivering Chilled. and chilly while you're in the middle of a paddle? An hour or two away from the access point. And it is a good question, and it certainly can happen, or the weather changes. Um, and so we want to continue to eat. Eating is energy, so getting some food. You may want to consider putting on another layer. If you don't have another layer, though, paddling a little faster and really working yourself into energy will allow you to build up your your blood and get things moving and that'll help warm you up so that is important if you find that you need to get out of the elements um, in that in your first aid kit always having like a warm safety blanket you know one of those uh, little silver blankets that you can take with you can help warm you up you can maybe you'll be in a place where you might be able to start a fire you do want to Think about on your communication device, we typically have our cell phones with us, assuming you have cell phone service. But in cold weather, sometimes your cell phone doesn't work to call and have somebody come help you. So remembering to keep that in something warm or insulated with you is also important, which is also important to also carry another device for that communication if you did need someone to come give you an assist. But essentially, if you start getting cold out on the water, I'd say eat something continue to drink water if you have to go to the restroom you should do that because holding in the fact that you need to urinate is a way of keeping your body colder it's going to kind of work and use a lot of energy and expend a lot of energy trying to keep you warm and so getting that out is important and then just trying to see if you can paddle a little faster to speed yourself up and get your heart rate up and and uh, get the blood moving another question you may need to repeat it because i don't have a mic is Air temperature and water temperature. A lot of people are comfortable when it's 60 degrees, which might be a day in November or December. What it's should a, they think about? It's a very common question, Brent. So the question is, what temperature do we decide when to wear things? And, and there's a rule that sometimes people use or have seen out there that when the air temperature and the water temperature are at least um, below 120 degrees combined, that you should be thinking about wearing that wet suit or that dry suit to keep you warmer. And that's, that's a good general rule of thumb, but I can tell you that on a day like today, it's uh, 55, let's say it's even 60, and the water temperature is 60, you can still be subject to hypothermia. It just takes a little longer typically uh, to get there. But I always recommend, uh, I, you know, I get cold easily, so it's always important to think about having more than what you really think you're gonna need. So. Again, thinking through those layers, making sure you have that wicking layer, that warm layer, and that weather layer will help reduce that. Some people really do lean on the wetsuit as their one main piece of gear because they don't have to own as much gear, and that is fine. If, if that air and, and water temperature are below 120 degrees, you'll read a lot of places that you should have a mandate of that wetsuit or that dry suit. Really, it's just making sure that you have the gear that's going to keep you warm. And uh, so you don't have to have a wetsuit or a dry suit. You can do it with just all the clothing that you own as long as it is wicking and uh, not cotton. It'll, it'll help you. And then that, that layer that's going to keep the, the wind and the weather off of you from cutting through that clothing is really important as well. Other questions out there. It is, it is really a great way to get out and paddle. It's, you know, a lot of people it's, don't think of cold weather as the paddling season, but honestly, that's a time when you can see a lot of wildlife and, and really um, enjoy yourself on the water. As long as you prepare 
think through what you're going to do and, and tell people uh, where you're going to be, when you're going to be back, and uh, just take safety precautions while you're out there, meaning taking the extra clothing, taking the extra food and the water, taking the, the right gear, protecting your head, your hands, and your feet, and, and really trying to minimize as much skin exposure as possible. You can have a great time out on the water at all times of the year. So it can be a great experience. Don't forget to, to paddle in groups as much as possible. Even though it's fun to paddle alone at times, we always recommend that you paddle in groups of three or more. So I recommend you go out and have a great time. So we thank uh, Subaru, Wagner Subaru, for helping this be possible for us to continue to tell you about great adventures in the outdoors and, and different uh, subjects out there. And, and uh, we know that Five Rivers Metro Parks, along with many outdoor retailers in the Dayton, Ohio area, are great advocates and also resources for you to find more information. Don't forget to wear it. Always wear a life jacket.